What's going on guys? My name is Alexander Mazai with NFTS.tips and we're gonna teach you about non-fungible tokens. So let's go! We're over here with Glassy and he's gonna teach us everything we need to know about NFTs, blockchain technologies, and everything in between. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the man, the legend, Mr. Glassy, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I am just doing fantastic. So we're gonna start over here at the NFTS.tips page, and we're gonna teach you a little bit of something over here. This is the fastest, easiest way to learn what an NFT is, right? You got a JPEG, and then you got an NFT. With that little blue chip, that means it's absolutely 100% verified, and we know that it came from a source, and that it's proven. The more important thing is this, uh, the understanding, and this actually, someone came up in the room last night and said that, he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're, you just listed that for $1,700? And you want me to pay you $1,700 to buy something that I've seen already? That I could just take a screenshot? Literally, he came in the room last night and said that. Ness was in the room. The homie Eden was like, you can see he was about to snap. And Ness was like, nah, fall back. I got this. I got you. He said, yeah, you could take a picture of anything. But it doesn't mean you own it. It doesn't mean that you can resell it. And it doesn't mean that you're going to get the respect for encouraging and having your relationship with these artists be what actually drives their career. But more importantly, the comparison he made was hilarious. He said, hey, you could go take a picture of a Rolex. That doesn't mean it's yours. Well, I, I like to look at it like this. You know, you, you got a Michael Jordan rookie card and you take it to the photocopy machine and you photo scan it and print it and then you take tape and you put it together and then you try to sell your copy who in their right mind is going to buy that trading card when it's not even a authentic playing card to begin with like there's there's a there's a value to people who know what the value is if you don't know what a rolex is you're not going to understand why people are paying that kind of money for a watch so basically we're going to have a bunch of different types of people we basically have creators collectors and curators yeah these are our three main segment groups within our community that we're looking to serve and bring valuable resources to and connect to each other in the way that they actually need done. So we're going to start as a creator and, and we're going to walk you through step by step everything that you need to learn exactly how to start this whole new journey because this is this is like drinking from a fire hose. We've been doing the NFTS.tips clubhouse room now for approximately 3,000 hours straight, 24 hours, no sleep, no stopping. We got mods from around the world that are running this room, and we're one of the fastest growing communities online for NFTs. So let's start with the, the checklist. So we got three different levels. We're definitely going to start at the beginning, so we're going to teach you everything you need to do from the beginning. We're going to teach you all the little tips and tricks that nobody really wants to share because we've been answering and servicing questions for those 3,000 hours. So we heard it all, right, Glassy? Yeah, we've heard just about every question, problem, point uh, point of pain and resistance. So let's start with security. What what is What is important for us to know about becoming a sovereign being? Well, the number one thing to understand is that we've been relying in many ways on institutions to do things for us that we could easily do for ourselves. In the scenario of cryptocurrency, we're talking about replacing a number of different intermediaries. But when I talk about institutions, the first one on the list is banks. Banks give us security. They make us, they make us feel safe. And between the insurance that they provide and the overall brand image that they've been able to maintain over the various centuries and I suppose millennia, they're offering this security to us. Like that is essentially the service that a bank offers. So when we're talking about cryptocurrency, there's a different person responsible for this level of security. There's actually a couple different factors that come into play. One is a big amount of responsibility that comes on the user. And that responsibility is in managing and keeping safe and understanding the importance of their passwords and their seed phrase for their wallets. And then security also falls in the realm of you know, it comes out also into the, the security of the chain and of the platforms themselves that you're using, including which wallet provider in terms of which chain that you're operating on and certainly what tools and dApps that you're using on that chain. So what is a decentralized network? What is block, how do blockchains operate? And what do we mean when we say decentralized? So let's say centralization is when you take all of your computer files or your servers and you have them in one location. 
So if you have a fire, a flood, a hack, a disgruntled employee, your files are jeopardized because they're all in one central location and or one group of people own it. A decentralized network is when you have it opened up to all different types of people who can use their computers as a node and they are using that to verify the transactions and it's completely separated from each other and they're all segregated all over the country or the world and they're all working together to store this one file so the only way to destroy that one file is to destroy all of the computers on the network which will be highly unlikely great summary it's hard to envision it's not super important that you understand every intricacy of how a decentralized network works but there are some key aspects that you do want to understand some of those aspects are like how many different nodes that that chain is currently supporting has a large is a, is a large factor in understanding how secure that blockchain is so when we talk about ethereum which is a, a lot of our conversations revolving around nfts and collectors and collectibles and nft art we're talking about the blockchain ethereum because that's where simply most of the people are currently there's many other blockchains coming up but ethereum it has a ton of nodes i i've heard numbers like 40,000 you know 40,000 different computers that are each processing and keeping a parallel image of this ledger the central body of truth you might have heard this word before it's called bitcoin that's one of the first blockchain technologies that has the best publicists everybody heard of it now they're really paying attention because it just passed sixty thousand dollars and everybody's excited about that so you guys need to understand you guys got to learn and do your own little bit of homework and research on what blockchain is actually you know what? let's talk about blockchain let's talk about blockchain really quick right. what is a blockchain people say like a cryptocurrency what is a cryptocurrency well a cryptocurrency is a blockchain is essentially one in the you know, uh, one in the same that the currency is the coin of the realm of the chain so ethereum we're talking about eth and eth is a way that you can interact with this blockchain and it's essentially the the representation of this value of the blockchain in its entirety and what does that really mean what is a blockchain the best way to describe it is it's a chain made up of a series of blocks and each of those blocks is filled with data so essentially it's a series of data filled blocks that's what a blockchain is that's why it's called that and what you're doing when you're making things like a purchase is that you're making a chain you're making a change to that series of blocks and that change might be something as simple as I own something and then I sold it to Alexander and so now we need to put on that ledger that some of his money is coming into my wallet and some of the contents of my wallet say an NFT is now move, being moved to his wallet so that key data needs to be committed to the blockchain and that is what we're saying, uh, make that change the blockchain. And that is where we're moving into things like gas fees, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Proof of work. So while these computers are basically racing to figure out when that transaction happens, where the original source came from. So it has to go, okay, Alex gave Glassy a Bitcoin or a, a cryptocurrency. Where did that come from? And it has to go all the way back to the original block to find is this a true transaction and if the answer is yes the miner or the computer that calculated that gets rewarded what's going on guys my name is alexander mazai with nfts.tips